Chapter four is work with exponential functions. And the first thing we're going to do is work with just integer exponents. So what is an integer exponent? What does that mean? Well, you should remember that integer numbers are numbers like minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. Okay, so they're whole numbers that are either positive or negative. No fractions, that's the next lesson. So first we're going to go over the basic laws of exponents. And a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. That means if the bases are the same, so notice these are the same a's. The base has to be the same. If the bases are the same and you're multiplying, then you add the exponents. So let's look at a, a simple example of that. Let's say I had um, 2 squared times 2 cubed. And if you expanded that, you'd have 2 times 2, that's 2 squared, times 2 times 2 times 2. And basically you can see that you would have 2 to the power of 5. So that's why it works like that. As well, if you have a to the m to the power of n, that's the same thing as a to the m n. Again, the base, is, the base is the same. We've got one similar base here. Well, actually, it's the only base. But let's say we had um, 2 squared and then cubed. So that would be like me doing 2 squared three times. right? To the power of 3 means I'm doing it three times. And now you can see if I expanded all these out, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. So it makes sense that when you have power to another power, is what I would say in class, power to a power, you multiply. So that gives you the 6. If we have something that's divided, ignore this little thing, I didn't, didn't mean that to be there at all. So I have a to the m and I'm dividing it by a to the n. So that says you subtract. If you're dividing and the bases are the same, again, we both have two a's here, you subtract the exponents. Subtract here. Subtract the exponents. And this one, you add the exponents. You did this before. It's nothing new. But let's take a little time just to figure this out. Let's say I have, um, I keep using 2, but why not? 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 squared. So if I wrote this out, I would have five twos up here and I would have two on the bottom. And if you simplified that, do, 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 look, I'm left with three. So that's five minus two. So two to the five minus two is two to the power of three. Proven again. A to the minus M is one over A to the M. Oh goodness, why is that true? Well, let's say we had, um, let's back up. Let's say we have 2 to the power of 2 divided by 2 to the power of 4. And the rule that we've already learned is if you're dividing and the bases are the same, you subtract the exponents. So you should know that that would be 2 to the power of 2 minus 4, which is 2 to the minus 2. But let's write it out. So let's go right from this one. We'll do another example. So we have 2 times 2, and we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So these two cross out, and I'm left with 1 over 2 squared. So that's 1 over 2 squared, which is the same as this. So when you have a negative exponent, it means 1 over this number squared. So my rule to my students is you would say 2 squared and this negative here would say 1 over it. 1 over it. See 1 over this. So just ignore the negative. Do 2 squared 1 over it and you can do these types of calculations very quickly. The last one is kind of similar to this one in that I have a negative exponent. So I have a over b to the negative n, and that's equal to b over a to the n. So let's see why. So let's say I had 2 over 3 to the negative, well, let's do negative 2, just for a little more of a challenge. So 
if you were in my class, I would say that's 2 over 3 squared, then 1 over it. So 2 over 3 squared is 4 over 9, 4 over 9, and 1 over it. So I put the 1 on the top, 1 over this squared. This means 1 over so 1 divided by 4 divided by 9, or 1 divided by 4 ninths, I know you're going to see it much easier if I write it like this. 1 divided by 4 ninths is 1 times 9 over 4, which is 9 over 4. So you can see this answer here is this flipped over, got rid of the negative exponent, and I squared it. So that's how those basic rules work. Now let's do some examples. I've got a few written out here for you. So I have 2 to the negative 3 to start with. So 2 to the negative 3, again, I would say 2 cubed 1 over it. I guess I'm going to write that out here. 2 cubed 1 over it. 2 cubed 1 over it. So that's really easy. 2 cubed is 8. The negative means 1 over that number, and I get 1 over 8. This one, we don't have a negative exponent. It's very important that you recognize that a negative exponent does not mean a negative number. Okay, don't make numbers negative. Notice the answer here was 1 8. There's nothing negative about 1 8. The negative is only with the exponent. This one, however, the number is negative. I'm doing minus 2 to the power of 3. So that's minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2. So anytime you're doing an operation where the exponent is an odd number and you're multiplying a negative number by this odd numbered here, so odd 1, 3, 5, 7, your answer will be negative. Why? Well, because a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. So my answer is going to be negative and 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Done. This one, minus 2 cubed, when you are working with numbers with variable exponents, integer exponents, this part here is going to be done first. It's not in brackets this time, right? This was in brackets and I got negative 8. This one's going to give me the very same answer, but for a little bit different reason. I'm going to do 2 to the power of 3 and then multiply it by negative 1. So let's look at one that wouldn't be the same, and that would be if I had something like minus 2 to the power of 4, or minus 2 to the power of 4. So minus 2 to the power of 4 is a negative times itself, 4 times is going to give me a positive answer, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Whereas this one, I have to do this first, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, then times a negative 1. Okay, so make sure you understand the difference between a number in brackets raised to a power or a number raised to a power times a negative. Okay, this one here, um, you should be pretty good with this now because we did the negative exponent. So I would do minus 3 halves squared 1 over it. Or easier, because I said if it has a negative exponent, you can make this exponent positive by flipping your fraction. You're not changing the sign in the fraction though. It's still negative. So this is the same as minus two-thirds cubed, uh, sorry, squared. And of course a negative times a negative is a positive. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. So if you had done it the other way, let's say I say okay well this to the power of two, so three over 2 squared, and it's negative, will be 9 over 4. So I'd have 9 over 4 to the negative 1, which is the same thing as 4 over 9. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now into some that are a little more difficult, where you have a bracket, another number, another number. Oh my goodness, what's a girl to do? Or a guy. So when you have all these things together, these are all power to a power to a power. All you have to do is multiply all multiply times 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 right so negative times a negative times a negative my answer is going to have 2 to a negative power and then I multiply the numbers 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is 6 
Now I haven't finished evaluating if the question asks you to evaluate. They want an answer for this. They don't want you to give me this. So 2 to the power of 6 is 64. You need to learn your 2 and 3, 2 and 4, really, to a few powers, and you'll get really good at them. Okay, so 2 to the power of 6 is 64. If it's negative, 2 to the power of 6 is 64. 1 over it. 1 over 64. Okay, 1 over it. Remember that negative there. Okay, how about this one? 3 squared times minus 5 to the minus 2. Ugh. Okay, let's look at this one first. This is this times this. Read the math. 3 squared times minus 5 to the minus 2. 3 squared, 9. Minus 5 squared is 25. 1 over it because of this. 1 over. 1 over it. So 5 squared or minus 5 squared is 25. And 1 over it is 1 over 25. And now you multiply 9 over 25. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, let's look at this one. A half to the minus 2. Okay, so this rule about flipping a, a rational number, so a fraction, if I flip the fraction, I can get rid of the negative sign. So this is just 2 squared. And I'm adding 3 to the negative 1. So 3 to the power of 1 is 3. The negative means 1 over it. So I have 4 plus 1 third, and you can either leave that as 4 and 1 third, or 13 thirds. Okay? Um, this one, this is where it starts getting a little more complicated. These are the more difficult questions, and I think it's about number 18, might be extended in this case. But good to learn, because you're going to have to figure it out. So I have x cubed to this thing. So you know that when you have power to a power, that you need to multiply this, right? You need to multiply that together. So I multiply the exponents. That gives me x to the 21. This is like 3, like this, right? Let me write it out in red. 3 times 7 minus r. That's equal to 21 minus 3r, right? So that's going to be my exponent here. 21 minus 3r. And I still have an x to the r. So these bases are the same, so I can continue. The bases are the same. If the bases are the same and I'm multiplying, that's what we're doing here, I add the exponents. So I get x to the 21 minus 3r plus r. And that would be x to the 21 minus 2r. Okay, just a couple more here and you can go to bed. Most of you are watching these videos at night, I figure. Catching up on your day. Good for you for keeping up with all the work. Grade 11 is tough and I'm just hoping that in some way I'm helping you. Okay, 3x quantity squared. When you're doing multiplication and you have a power out here, the power belongs to both of these numbers. So that means 3 squared is 9 and x squared is x squared. And a couple of more from your homework assignment. You might have seen this and went, oh my goodness, what do I do with that? So we look at each of them individually. This is multiplication. So because it's multiplication, I can work numerator and denominators, right? I can divide. So these have the same basis. I can divide these and divide these. So if I have um, 3 to the minus 2 divided by 3 to the minus 1, so that would be minus 2 minus minus 1, right? Minus 2 minus minus 1. It really didn't need that bracket. And this would be times 2 to the minus 3 minus minus 2. So 2 minus minus 1 is minus 2 plus 1 is 3 to the negative 1. And this is 2 to the negative 3 plus 2 is 2 to the negative 1. Okay, now 3 to the negative 1 is a third and 2 to the negative 1 is a half. So this comes out to 1 over 6. 
Now you could have done this a different way and we'll we'll do that just to double check make sure I didn't make a mistake. I'm going to write it out like this now. 3 to the half, 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 9. 2 to the negative 3 is 2 cubed is 8, 1 over it is 1 eighth. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 over 3 and 2 to the negative 2 is 2 squared 1 over it, so a quarter. So I end up with 1 over 72 divided by 1 over 12. When you divide fractions, you invert and multiply. And that gives me the same answer of 1 sixth. Okay, so you can do it this way, you can do it this way. Um, I think this way was easier for this one, and uh, this is a little bit longer. But when we get to a question like this one, I'm just going to divide this off here so you don't get confused. When we get to this one, we can't divide these things out because there's plus and minuses in between. Remember when I did a little example for you? I'll, I'll put it over here for a second. I can't say 3 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 2. I can't do this and say it's 3 quarters. That would be so wrong because 3 minus 2 is 1 and 4 minus 2 is 2. The answer is not 3 quarters. So unless things are multiplied, you cannot divide numerators and denominators out, okay? So don't do that, especially here. So I have to evaluate each one of these separately, like I did with this one over here. So 5 to the negative 1, that's 5 to the power of 1 and 1 over it. Minus 2 to the negative 2. 2 squared is 4, 1 over it, minus 1 over 4. Okay, are you getting it now? Just 1 over it when you see that negative exponent. So 5 to the power of 1, 1 over it, that's a fifth. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 1 over it is 1 quarter. So now, in order for me to add and subtract these numerators and denominators, I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to make them over 20. That's going to be over 20 in the denominator as well. So this would be 4 over 20 minus 5 over 20, right? Because I have to make this times 5, this times 5, times 4, times 4. So I'm going to have 4 minus 5 in the top here. And in the denominator, I'm going to multiply the bottom by 4, top by 4, bottom by 5, top by 5, da 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 and I have 4 over 20 plus 5 over 20. 4 plus 5 over 20. Okay, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So I have minus 1 over 20. And I'm going to divide by this answer. 9 over 20. Okay, when you're dividing fractions, you invert and multiply. I'm just going to bring it over here. So that's minus 1 over 20 times 20 over 9. And you can see now I can cancel the 20s and I get minus 1 over 9. That's your lesson for today. Hope that helped. Please subscribe, like, make a comment, do something. Let me know there's somebody out there that's actually watching these videos to the very end. Good luck.